What's up smart homers? My name's Aaron and in this video I'm going to show you 14 different smart bulbs. Smart bulbs are great because they don't really require any skill to install and they can be quickly and easily added to your smart home. A lot of times people start with cheap cloud-based bulbs that are abundant on Amazon, but eventually they want to get to some more expensive and higher quality bulbs. The problem is there are tons of smart bulbs out there and it's really hard to know which one is best for your specific situation. That's why I've bought 14 different smart bulbs and I've tested them out to see how each of them work. I'm going to compare their prices and features, I'll briefly show you their native app, and then I'm going to show you how they work with my smart home platform of choice, which is Home Assistant. All of these bulbs do work with Home Assistant, but if you don't use Home Assistant, that's okay, because I'll try to give you an idea of which other smart home platforms they work with. Again, at the end, I'll tell you which ones are my favorite and my least favorite, and I'll leave links to all the bulbs we cover in this video in the description. I tried to avoid bulbs that are cloud-based because if the company hosting that cloud goes bust, then your device might not work anymore. Finally, most of the bulbs in this video will work on Wi-Fi, but some of them use other wireless protocols like Zigbee, Z-Wave, or Thread. These require a special hub or radio to get working with your smart home, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you may want to just avoid them and stick with the Wi-Fi bulbs. So first, let's look at the Wi-Fi devices. The first one is the SwitchBot bulb. When you open it up, you can see there's nothing special looking about it. It does have the SwitchBot logo on the base, but nothing that stands out and looks bad. The app has pretty basic controls with white, color, dynamic, and music modes. I'm not gonna get into all the details of the app, but I do like that in white mode, it allows you to set some presets. So you can tune the bulb to match your existing non-smart bulbs and then save those presets to easily access them later. There are also presets for color mode as well as a bunch of options for basic colors, which is sometimes nicer than using a color wheel. Dynamic mode has some options for looping colors, but it's nothing earth shattering. Unfortunately, with the SwitchBot bulb, there's no way to control the state of the bulb after power outage, so you may end up having a bulb that's just on when power is restored. Where this bulb shines, in my opinion, is compatibility. It's compatible with Home Assistant, SmartThings, Hubitat, Google Assistant, Amazon Assistant, and Apple Home. This means that if you switch platforms later on, these bulbs should still work for you. The brightness of this bulb is decent, about mid-range, but the color accuracy isn't so great. In order to add this bulb to Home Assistant, we're not actually gonna add it via Wi-Fi. Instead, we're gonna add it via Bluetooth. This requires you to have Bluetooth set up and running in Home Assistant, but that's as simple as adding a Bluetooth dongle. Once you do that, the bulb is gonna be automatically discovered in Home Assistant, and you can go ahead and add it. You only get the single light entity, but you can control the color and white temperature as you'd expect. You do want to make sure you have decent Bluetooth range in Home Assistant, and it may be worth checking out ESP Home Bluetooth Proxy to extend that range. Overall, I'd say that this bulb is decent with fairly accurate colors, but a really nice saturated yellow, which you don't see on some of those cheaper bulbs that you find on Amazon. Also, SwitchBot has a lot of unique products, so it's not a bad ecosystem to get into. The next one I want to look at is the Wise Color Bulb. Right off the bat, I want to tell you that this bulb is super bright. It's actually the second brightest of all the bulbs in this video, so you're definitely getting all 1100 lumens that are advertised. It has a generic look like the SwitchBot, but it has a little bit more of a bold logo on the base, and it's quite hefty, so it makes you feel like you're holding something that's high quality. The app gives you a brightness slider, color wheel, and a white temperature wheel. It also has a bunch of preset scenes that you can choose from, or you can save your own if they don't match what you want. In settings, there's a power loss recovery option, which allows you to tell the bulb what to do if there's power outage. This means that if you lose power and the power comes back on, you can have the bulb stay off or maintain whatever the state was before the power went out. As far as compatibility, this device is gonna work with Home Assistant, SmartThings, Google Assistant, and Amazon Assistant. As far as I know, it doesn't work with Hubitat or with Apple Home. 
So adding this bulb to Home Assistant is not as easy as adding the SwitchBot bulb, but it is gonna connect over Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth like the SwitchBot. For this one, we're gonna need a custom integration from the Home Assistant Community Store. And you will need to enter your username and password for your WISE account, and it's gonna pull your WISE devices from the cloud. The device page shows you a basic light entity with color controls, white temperature control, and also some effects. Unfortunately, this integration does rely on the WISE cloud, which a lot of people in the home system community are not a fan of. However, if you go to the integrations page and click on configure on the WISE integration, you can check the use local control for light bulbs and light strips option. And apparently you won't need the cloud to control this bulb, which is pretty sweet. Overall, I really love how bright this bulb is. The colors are fairly accurate, and I really feel like it's competitively priced for what you're getting. What I'd love to see though, is a local API for all WISE devices, if it doesn't already exist, and a native Home Assistant integration. Okay, so the next Wi-Fi bulb that I wanna look at is one that I've been wanting to look at for a long time, and that's the Yeelight Color Bulb 1S. It has a tapered cylindrical shape with a diamond pattern design on the body, and the Yee Light logo on it. The screw has purple accent plastic, which is a nice touch. And on the back side of the bulb, it has the HomeKit pairing code for adding it to Apple Home. When you first add the bulb to the app, it gives you a little message about LAN control. And it tells you that if your phone is on the same network as the bulb, the communication doesn't involve the Yee Light cloud at all. Pretty sweet. This LAN control actually applies to your Google Home devices if they're telling the bulb to turn on and they're both on your local network. The app has four tabs, recommend, white, color, and flow. The recommend tab has some built-in presets. The color tab shows a color pad rather than the typical wheel, which is kind of different, but serves the same function. And the white tab allows you to tune the white temperature. And the flow tab allows you to customize the flow effect. As far as compatibility goes though, this bulb works with all of the major players, Home Assistant, SmartThings, Hubitat, Google Assistant, Amazon Assistant, and Apple Home. The Yeelight Home Assistant integration is a native integration, which means this bulb is gonna be automatically discovered once it's set up in the app. In Home Assistant, you're gonna get a basic light entity with color and white temperature controls, as well as a whole list of custom effects. If you look up the Yeelight integration, you're gonna see that it's IOT class is local push. And that means that there's no cloud involvement. Awesome. As far as design goes, I think this is one of the better looking bulbs that we're gonna look at today because it's just so unique. During my testing, I really was not impressed though with the color accuracy of the yellow color. It ended up being more of a pale yellowish color, which just kills me, but overall still a decent bulb. Okay, so the next one we're gonna look at is a bit different because it runs a software that's not typically used for bulbs. This bulb by Atom runs WLED, which is a firmware that's made for controlling LED strips. The first thing you notice about this bulb is how huge it is. It has an E26 base, but the body of this thing is a lot larger than an A19. They do offer a lower wattage bulb that's a bit smaller if that's a problem for you. You can also see that it's rated for 15 watts, which is a higher power rating than any of the other bulbs we're looking at. Setup in the app works like any other WLED controller that you use for light strips, and I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but it's not quite as straightforward as some of the other bulbs that we're looking at. One of the cool things about WLED though, is that the controls for this bulb can be accessed right from your web browser, so you don't need to even have an app. The main controls page gives you a color wheel, and white control, but this is where I need to warn you about something. Atham has a disclaimer that if you turn the white brightness all the way up and the color brightness all the way up at the same time, you could cause problems with the bulb, burn it out or whatever. I actually tried it, but not for very long, but I didn't have any issues with the bulb, but I could see how it could damage it if you did that for too long. So you really only want to either operate the white channel or the RGB channel. But I'm going to show you a thing that fixes this so you don't have to worry about that. In the WLED settings, you can change the power on state so that if you lose power and then power is restored, the bulb doesn't turn back on. Now, there are a lot of other things you can do with the app. 
a lot of effects and things like that, but most of these are geared toward LED strips and they don't really do much for a bulb. Adding this bulb to Home Assistant should be super easy because there's a native WLED integration. I was having a hard time getting this bulb to be auto discovered because it should be, there's a native integration. So I tried manually adding it and I got an error message. It stated that this particular WLED device uses CCT channels and so it was not supported by the integration. However, there is a fix for it in WLED that I'll show you. Either in the app or on your PC, open the controls for the bulb and click configuration. Choose LED preferences and then scroll down until you see the white management section. Check the calculate CCT channel from RGB option and then click save. If you restart Home Assistant, now you're gonna see that the bulb is auto discovered and you can go ahead and set up a Home Assistant without any issues. On the device page, you can see that it has a light entity, which has color and white controls, a bunch of configuration controls that you can mess with, and even a diagnostic section with some information about the device. The other thing that's cool is that you can navigate to the WLED browser controls right from the device info section by clicking the visit link. So while I really do like this bulb, one of the issues that it has is compatibility. It does work locally with Home Assistant and it jankily works with Amazon Assistant, but all the rest of the smart home platforms, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work with. There is an edge driver for smart things, but it can become out of sync with the bulb itself and lose track of whether the bulb is on or off if you control the bulb with anything but smart things. The next one is the Wiz Connected Bulb. This bulb is one of the cheapest ones we're gonna look at in this video. And looking at it, it looks very basic apart from this little blue accent ring around the base of the screw. As far as compatibility goes, these bulbs do have a native local integration for Home Assistant. And they also work with SmartThings, Hubitat, Google Assistant, and Amazon Assistant. There are actually two Wiz apps, but I'm gonna show you version two because version one has a little notification that says, hey, switch to our new one. Plus, version two is much better. It has a color wheel, and underneath, there is a spot to set the hex color value. There's also some suggested colors and a brightness slider. Above the color wheel, there's a button to navigate to the white controls, and there you can actually manually enter the warmth in Kelvin. There are three tabs at the bottom, static, dynamic, and custom. And what we've been looking at is custom, where you can control the colors. But static gives some preset colors that you can choose for different scenes. And dynamic gives you color changing presets for different scenes. Adding this bulb to Home Assistant is super easy because like I said, there's a native integration for it. Home Assistant recognizes your Wiz device automatically. And on the device page, you can see that you have a light entity, a sensor for power consumption, and an effect speed slider. I'm not sure if the power sensor is actually accurate, but that's not really necessary for a bulb anyway. Something to note too with this integration is that its IoT class is local push, meaning that it doesn't require any cloud connectivity and it's not wasting resources polling for the state of the device. Overall, it's a decent bulb when it comes to color accuracy for red, green, and blue, but the yellow was very orangey, which is too bad. Overall, it had a fairly average brightness for these different colors with blue being surprisingly bright, but that's about it. The next bulb ranks numero uno for the cheapest in this video, but let's check out the features. This one is the Miras Smart Bulb. The first thing you notice about this bulb is how light it is. It literally feels like there's nothing to it, but maybe that's a good thing. It's another very basic bulb with not much to it aesthetically. I do have to say though that I really like the look of the Miros app. They did something right with it and it's really easy on the eyes. In the device page, you can see color and white tabs and each have a wheel for the color selection and warmth selection respectively. There's a brightness slider under the wheel and a power button at the bottom of the page. And that's pretty much it. They're really keeping it simple, which I like. Unfortunately, with this bulb, there's no setting in the app for power on state. So if you lose power and power is restored, that bulb's coming back on. This bulb works with Home Assistant, SmartThings, Google Assistant, and Amazon Assistant. And you may be saying, but what about Apple Home? And while Miros is known for Apple Home products, this specific bulb is not compatible, but they do make others that are. 
To add this bulb to Home Assistant, we're going to need a custom integration from the Home Assistant Community Store, of which there are a few, but the one that I like best is called Miros LAN. It's the simplest to set up and it allows you to communicate with your Miros devices locally. The only thing is, it uses their cloud to obtain your device keys unless you already know them. The device page shows a light entity with a color wheel and color warmth controls and also a signal strength entity, but that's pretty much it. Nice and simple. Like I said before, this bulb is the cheapest of all of them and I'd say it's not bad for the price. The color accuracy was great for the red and blue colors, but the green was an extremely bluish green, not the vibrant green that we see with the other bulbs. The yellow was a bit orangey too, but where those colors lacked in accuracy, they excelled in brightness. In fact, this bulb is the brightest bulb in this whole video, and it's not the highest lumen rating. It's only 800 lumens, where the 1000 lumen bulbs weren't even this bright. That's nuts. The next one is a bulb that's really grown on me, and that's the LifeX Color Bulb. It's the most premium feeling bulb of all the ones we're looking at today, and also the most expensive. It's also right up near the top for brightness, surpassed only by the Miros bulb, as I mentioned before. It has a made to be seen design, a bulb that you don't want to put a shade over. It feels like the diffuser could unscrew from the base, but it doesn't. And although the diffuser looks pretty small, this bulb does have a 210 degree angle of lighting. The base of the bulb is blank except for the LifeX logo and some information squished down near the screw. The instruction manual has a sticker with the Apple Home pairing code on it, so you should save that if you want to add the bulb to Apple Home. Along with Apple Home, this bulb also works locally with Home Assistant and it works with SmartThings, Hubitat, Google Assistant, and Amazon Assistant. It's super compatible. Adding it to the app, though, proved a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be, and I think it had something to do with the 2.4 gigahertz network requirement, or whatever it is, but eventually I did get it added. After that, I had no further issues with connectivity. The app has an interesting design, and while I really don't like the UI when it comes to creating rooms and groups, the controls for the bulb itself are pretty satisfying. You have the color wheel with a brightness scroller in the middle and the power button on the bottom, and below you have tabs for white control, themes, and palette. But in general, the rest of the app is pretty standard. One thing is that there's no option to control the power on state of the bulb, so if you lose power and power is restored, bulbs come back on. That actually surprises me for a bulb of this quality. Since LifeX has a native Home Assistant integration, as soon as you've set the bulb up in the app, you can check Home Assistant and it should be auto-discovered. On the device page, you can see a light entity, an identify button, and a restart button. The light entity has a color wheel and white warmth control, as you'd expect, as well as some effects that can be applied. The identify button makes the bulb flash, so you can identify if you have more than one, and the restart button restarts the bulb if you ever want to do that. Overall, this bulb really does feel like a premium device, but you gotta remember that it is the most expensive bulb followed closely by the Philips Hue bulb, so you gotta ask yourself, are the features worth what you're paying? Color-wise, the color accuracy was pretty decent, the yellow being a little bit orangey, but the brightness that it puts out is pretty decent, and it kinda makes up for that. The next one also has a pretty interesting design, and it's the 1000 lumen TP-Link Casa Bulb. The base of the bulb has a unique layered design with a smooth top layer and rippled waves underneath. There's a cutaway of the first layer, almost all the way down to the screw, and below that is the Casa logo. The diffuser has a flattened sphere shape, and it looks like it can be separated from the base, but it can't. I think they did a good job of making the bulb look unique, but not cheap. Speaking of price, these are one of the cheapest bulbs we're gonna look at in this video, and I think that's pretty sweet. In the app, at the top of the device page, you're gonna see four shortcut buttons, which are presets that you can set up. On the bottom of the device page, you can see four tabs, power, brightness, white, and color. Brightness gives you a brightness wheel, white gives you a warmth circle, and color gives you a color wheel, as you'd expect. If you tap the presets button in the bottom left corner, you can change the persistent presets, which are there at the top, and there's also a recents tab. You can create a schedule as well, 
for the light and you can also track the energy usage of the bulb, which is kind of neat. As far as compatibility, this bulb works locally with Home Assistant and also works with Samsung SmartThings, Hubitat, Google Assistant, and Amazon Assistant. Home Assistant has a native local integration for the CASA stuff, so it should be automatically discovered in Home Assistant. On the device page, you're gonna see a light entity and some power consumption entities. The light entity gives you the color wheel and white warmth adjustments, but I haven't checked the power consumption entities to see if they're accurate, so I really couldn't tell you, but again, don't really need those. I really like how cheap these bulbs are and the fact that they work so seamlessly with Home Assistant. The color accuracy is fairly decent and the brightness is just under the LifeX. Okay, so now we're gonna look at some devices that use other protocols like Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Thread rather than Wi-Fi. The first one is a legendary Zigbee bulb that's been a standard, I guess you could say, for quite a long time, and that is the Philips Hue bulb. There are a few different options of Philips Hue bulb, but I got the 1100 lumen medium brightness bulb. It has a non-standard design, but it's not super flashy, so you don't feel like you're paying for looks like you are with the LifeX. Speaking of the price though, this thing is second most expensive in this video, just under the LifeX. It has the iconic hue look, the weird trumpet shape that I honestly don't really like that much, but that's okay. And it has the Philips Hue logo on the base in a copper color ink with some model information and a plain screw end. So this bulb is a bit different than the ones we've looked at so far because this one is really made to be connected to the Philips Hue hub. Then you use the Philips Hue app to control this bulb and you'd be a part of their little ecosystem and you'd be wasting a bunch of money. Since other hubs like SmartThings and Home Assistant that are way more powerful can connect directly to this bulb, there's no need to get the Philips Hue hub. However, Philips would rather you did get their hub and I'm gonna explain what they've done a little later on. Anyway, it's compatible with Home Assistant, SmartThings, and Hubitat with or without the hub. And then with the hub, it's compatible with Google Assistant, Amazon Assistant, and Apple Home. Since I use Home Assistant, I'm gonna show you how it looks there. In the device page, it shows up with a light entity as well as some configuration options. It allows you to set the state after power on, which is really nice, as well as what color and brightness you'd like to have it start up with. The light entity gives you the standard color wheel and white warmth controls and a single color loop effect. The best part about this bulb, I guess, is the accuracy of the red, green, and blue colors, but the yellow accuracy is horrendous. Here's the problem with this bulb though. If you ever delete one of these bulbs from your ecosystem, like Home Assistant or SmartThings or Hubitat, you can't just factory reset it or put it back into pairing mode and pair it with another ecosystem. You actually need to have a Philips Hue product in order to put it back into pairing mode. After researching, I found that you needed to have the Philips Hue dimmer in order to put the bulb back into pairing mode. Now, maybe I'm missing something here, but that is nuts. I got nailed with this when I was testing it with the different smart home platforms that I'm telling you about, and I couldn't put it back into pairing mode. Thankfully, I run an add-on with one of my instances of a home assistant called Zigbee to MQTT, and that just happens to have a feature called TouchLink, which can put Philips Hue bulbs back into pairing mode. You actually have to take the bulb, put it smack next to your Zigbee dongle for that Home Assistant instance that's running Zigbee to MQTT, and then run TouchLink. Other than that, or the Hue dimmer, I don't know if there's any way to put this thing into pairing mode, and I think that is ridiculous. The next Zigbee bulb we're gonna look at is the Sengled color bulb. At first glance, it does appear kind of ordinary, but I do like that they put a little bit of flare at the bottom edge of the base. Other than that, it just has the Sengled logo on the base and some Zigbee information. Similarly to Philips, Sengled does make their own hub they kind of expect you to use this bulb with, and that makes this bulb compatible with Amazon and Google Assistants, but without it, it's still compatible with Home Assistant, Hubitat, and SmartThings. It's also compatible with Amazon Assistant directly with no hub if you have the Amazon Echo that has a Zigbee radio built in. Once again, I'm gonna skip the Sengled hub because I think you should only need one hub. In Home Assistant, you get a light entity with color and warmth controls and also some configuration entities. There's on level, startup color temperature, and startup current level. I assume these have to do with power on state, 
but I couldn't get any of them to do anything except for the color temperature on power on. Not really sure what's up with that. Overall, this bulb is okay, but the color accuracy isn't too great. Red and blue were accurate, but green had a real bluish tint and yellow was just horrible. However, unlike the hue bulb, this bulb can be put into pairing mode without the need for another product of any kind. All you have to do is turn the power to it on and off 10 times fast. Another Zigbee bulb that I tested out was the inner color bulb. Out of the box comes a fairly generic looking bulb. It has the inner logo on the base as well as some Zigbee information. Inner doesn't sell their own hub, so you're definitely going to need one that's going to be compatible if you want to use this bulb. It's going to work with Home Assistant, SmartThings, Hubitat, and Amazon Assistant if you have an Echo with a built-in Zigbee radio. Also, unlike the Hue bulb, if you want to reset this bulb, you just turn the power on and off six times fast. In Home Assistant, you're going to see that you get your standard light entity as usual, but you get a decent number of configuration options as well, including on level, on off transition time, startup behavior after power loss, the startup color temperature, and the startup brightness. I couldn't figure out what on level does, but I got all the rest of them to work as you'd expect they would. The startup behavior setting is really cool. One of the options being have the bulb do whatever it was doing before the power outage. Very cool. And this is one of the things that I do like about these Zigbee bulbs that we've been looking at is that there are configuration options in there and it's not just on or off color. There's some cool things you can change and it's right in Home Assistant or whatever smart home platform you're using and it doesn't have to be in a manufacturer's app. Color accuracy was great for red, green, and blue and fairly decent for yellow too, which is super nice. Brightness for this one was about average for the rating. Okay, so now we're on to the last of the Zigbee bulbs. In all my previous comparison videos, people have been like, why aren't you using Ikea stuff? And it's because they didn't deliver to my area, but now they do, and I've been hitting that up all the time. The Ikea Trad Free bulb is probably the cheapest feeling and the most generic looking bulb of all of the ones in this video. Notably smaller than the other bulbs, it still packs 800 lumens and it holds its own in terms of brightness. It works with Home Assistant, SmartThings, and Hubitat, and if you use it with their trad-free hub that they also sell, it'll work with Google Assistant, Amazon Assistant, and Apple Home. In Home Assistant, you'll see the light entity, an on-level entity, and then startup entities for state, color, temperature, and brightness. Again, I'm not sure what the on-level entity is supposed to do, but the other ones work great. So my biggest issue with this bulb was that I'm pretty sure I got a defective one because the green did not work. There was no green. Weirdly, there was yellow, which I think is really a mix of the green and the blue, a little bit of red. It's a mix of the colors. So I feel like the green LED has to work in order to show yellow, but maybe I'm wrong. The color accuracy for red and blue were spot on. So now let's move on to the only Z-Wave bulb in this whole video. This one is made by a company called Innovelli. The bulb is an 800 lumen bulb with a nice hefty feel to it. It has the Innovelli logo in large gray letters on the base and a bit of a wavy edge down by the screw. Otherwise, it looks pretty basic. Since this is a Z-Wave bulb, there is no native app, but it will work with Home Assistant, SmartThings, and Hubitat. In Home Assistant, you get a light entity with the expected controls, a firmware entity, and a ping entity. The firmware entity lets you know if the bulb is up to date, and I'm pretty sure that any firmware updates that need to be done can be done through Home Assistant. The configuration options also allow you to set the power on state of the bulb and make some modifications to the color temperature, which is super cool. One thing I really like about this bulb is the fact that it acts as a Z-Wave range extender meaning it can extend your Z-Wave mesh. You can get a little bit better range. However, you may not see as great range with this bulb as some other Z-Wave devices that are newer because it only has a 500 series Z-Wave chip in it, where the standard I believe now is 800 series or at least 700. I didn't have any issues with the bulb, but I do have a robust Z-Wave network because I got Z-Wave switches everywhere. So I can't really say if you'll have issues, but I'd say probably not. The color accuracy was decent for this bulb, pretty accurate red and green, okay blue, but excellent yellow. 
Okay, so the next two bulbs we're going to look at are really in a class of their own. And I'm really grouping them as one bulb here, even though there's two different ones. I'll explain that in a second. Of the two bulbs, one of them runs on thread, and one of them runs matter over thread. Nanoleaf has been a front runner in the higher end LED lighting arena, specifically focusing on these LED panels that you can see that snap together, which are pretty cool. Their main line of essentials bulbs is what I'm showing first, and these run on thread, which is a wireless protocol. They're meant to work with their Nanoleaf hub, but since they're thread based, if you have a home pod that acts as a thread border router, they'll work with Apple Home that way. They're definitely one of the cooler looking bulbs with their distinctive crystal diffuser design, squarish base, and a touch of green accent on the screw. The base of the bulb also has the HomeKit pairing code, so you can add it to Apple Home pretty easily. The app is pretty basic with a power toggle and brightness slider at the top, and then three tabs, basic, scene, and favorites. The basic screen has the color wheel and some presets below it. The scene tab has a bunch of preset scenes and also allows you to create your own. And then you can mark some of those scenes as favorites and they'll show up in the favorites tab. There is a Nanoleaf Home Assistant integration, but that's only for the Nanoleaf products that work over Wi-Fi. It doesn't apply to these thread bulbs. Since I can't get thread working properly with my Home Assistant Yellow, I'm not going to be able to add it via thread, but I can add this bulb to Home Assistant via Bluetooth. This will be done using the HomeKit controller integration. Once added, we should see a light entity, a thread provisioning button, an identify button, and some other thread entities. I'm not really sure what any of those do, but all you really need is the light. Don't forget that your Bluetooth range might be poor, but it can be increased with Bluetooth proxies. So Nanoleaf has just released a new version of the Essentials bulb, and it might be just completely replacing it, and that is the Nanoleaf Essentials with Matter. It appears to have the exact same LED in it and be constructed almost exactly the same, except for is run in matter, and you can see the matter code is on the base of the bulb. They actually sent me this bulb to take a look at it and I told them that I'd mention it in this video because it's a newer style bulb that's coming out. I struggled for quite a while to get this bulb added to Home Assistant via matter because the matter add-on is still in beta, but I was able to get it added after some recent updates and it's quick and responsive. I really like it. I was also able to add the bulb to SmartThings as well. The bulb really does have a great look and feel to it, and I think they put a lot of work into design, and I wish they had put more effort into the LED that's inside there, because this thing is the dimmest bulb of all the bulbs in this video. By far, the brightness is lowest. As far as color accuracy, red, green, and blue were pretty accurate, with yellow being moderately accurate. So that's all the bulbs I looked at, but I want to explain how I did my testing so you understand how I've compared these. For each of the bulbs I tested, I set them at their maximum brightness, and then I set them for red, green, blue, and yellow sequentially. I used a lux meter that I picked up off of Amazon to measure the brightness of the bulbs at each color. Here you can see the results of my testing, and even though the actual values may not mean much, it's a decent way to compare the relative brightness of the bulbs. While doing this, I also recorded the process with my camera, and then I'm using a feature in DaVinci Resolve that lets me kind of tell how accurate those colors were. Now again, I know it depends on the settings of your camera, but at least it's consistent between all the bulbs, and you can compare them between themselves. This helped me confirm that some of the bulbs did indeed have some color inaccuracy, and it also showed me that Miras is able to obtain a really bright blue, for example, by also turning on the red and the green LEDs, I think. So it's not exactly accurate blue, but it's super bright. Anyway, I hope this data helps you just kind of get an idea for how I compared them. And of course, I'm gonna have a written version on my website with a lot more details about these bulbs. Okay, so now let's talk about my favorites and my least favorites. Just a reminder, I've left links for all these bulbs in the description. For the best high-end bulb, I put my money on the LifeX color bulb. I know it's pretty expensive, but it's more of an art piece than a bulb that you hide under a lampshade. That being said, I'd choose it any day over that Philips Hue bulb. If you're just looking for a super bright bulb, Wise is a great choice. 
That, along with the fact that the colors are fairly accurate and it appears to work locally with Home Assistant, makes it a pretty good buy if you're looking for that bright bulb. If you're just looking for the best bulb for the price, I think a great cheaper option is that Casa bulb. It had decent color accuracy, excellent yellow color, worked locally with Home Assistant, and the price is just hard to beat. For a mid-range bulb with top tier compatibility, I'd go with the Yeelight bulb. It's compatible with the top six smart home platforms and the bulbs operate without need for cloud connectivity. If you want a good Zigbee bulb, then I'd recommend the inner bulb, although it's a little bit expensive and have that great color accuracy. If you want a Z-Wave bulb, the only one I looked at is the Innovelli, so go for that one. Okay, so here are the bulbs I would not recommend. I'll admit that I had a little bit of bias against this one from the beginning from watching too much Paul Hibbert, but the Philips Hue bulb is a no-go for me. To pay that much for a bulb that won't even let you put it into pairing mode when you remove it from one smart home platform is crazy. I really don't think it's something the smart home community should stand for in their products. The next one I would steer clear of is the Nano Leaf bulb. While it does have some serious style, I think the fact that it's dim, the color accuracy isn't great, and the app is kind of confusing a little bit and hard to use, makes me feel like it's not worth a $20 price tag, and I can't really recommend it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you sort through the big mess of smart bulbs that are out there and give you an idea of which one would be best for your situation. Also, don't forget that a smart bulb isn't always the best way to go, and a lot of times a smart switch is the better way to do it. If you did like the video, please take a second to like it, and let me know in the comments if you had different experiences with these bulbs. Also, I'm going to be doing more reviews like this and other tutorials with Home Assistant, so hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of that. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.